Hi everyone, my name is Cold Blue Light. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, the last time we worked on our project, we added a save and load function to the game, and all that does is it reads a text file and finds uh, the node path stored in that file, and then it'll load it from that file, and then go to that scene. So while I, while I was away these past few days, I cleaned up a couple of things. If you notice, my scenes folder now has two additional folders, levels and UX. This is where we're going to be storing our user interface stuff, the chat, the chat box, etc. Uh, that did cause me some issue in the form of broken dependencies, but that was really easy to fix. And all I had to do was essentially just uh, delete the node out of the scene and then uh, reset everything back up so once that was done and I did a little bit of uh, cleanup tasks I worked on the last bit of uh, last bit of scripting for the buttons and for the chat box so let's go ahead and take a look at the game so far and go ahead and run it and you see it runs like normal we can still save and load but after a few minutes we have a new set of dialogue appear and we have some buttons and these buttons are going to be the player choices this is how the player is going to go from scene to scene whenever they get asked a question by a character or whatever in this case should she talk to her friends or go to class first now if you say go to class then it would uh, call a bit of script and go to the next scene. So let's look at that script. Uh, this is super, super simple. This is the choice buttons script and the choice buttons is a, the choice scene is a new scene I have set up with three buttons and one script. And the script for the buttons does something simple. It exports a variable called show choice and this is a boolean so it's true or false and it has two functions show choice and hide choice and if show choice is set to true then we call a bit of code that's built into Godot called self.show but if show choice is false then we hide everything that way we can hide all the choices when we go from scene to scene uh, so it looks more natural, you know, uh, most visual novels don't instantly show the choices They have a bit of dialogue then the choices appear and this allows us to do that All right, that's all this does. Let's take a look at our chat box now our chat box has had a bit of uh, work done to it and That work is three variables being exported as strings called choice one two and three and these choices tie in to the buttons. Right now they don't do anything because I haven't set them up in that scene to do something. Uh, but let's continue down real quick. On function ready, we are calling a variable called show buttons and it's set to get a node and the node it's getting is our button choice one, okay? And from choice one, we're calling hide choice because when the scene starts, we don't want our choices to be visible, okay? So in the first scene, when it runs, this gets ran, ran first because when the scene's ready, it's going to call show buttons.hide. And that hides our buttons, okay? Now next, if we continue on down, we have the usual stuff that we did the last time, except when we get here, we have a new function called on timer timeout. And that's because inside of our chat box scene, we have a new node called a timer node. And a timer node is a timer that we can use to just trigger events automatically on a set amount of time. Right now it's set to 3.9. And if we look over here on the, the uh, node tab, we can see that all I've done is taking the timeout signal and connect it to the chat box. All right. So when this timer times out, it's going to call show buttons again. We have to do this for a second time because we're inside of a uh, we're inside of a different function. So variable show buttons is still getting the node 
choice one. And it's calling this time show choice instead of hide choice. Then we are setting our text speed back to zero and then setting the text dialog to be our next set of dialog, okay? So uh, if you remember, every few seconds we have uh, draw text adding up. And this is what draws our uh, text one character at a time. So when the timer times out, we need to reset that again. So we set it back to zero, and then because it's running in delta, it gets added back up over time, showing the text out uh, once again till the, to the maximum character limit. Okay, and that's all that's doing. Now if we look just below this, we have uh, three more functions. And these three functions will be tied to our buttons. So we have uh, choice one, choice two, and choice three. And if I look back over here in our scene, we can see our scene has the choice button instanced into it. And underneath the choice button, we have set the uh, choice text and set a signal for each button uh, when it's pressed, okay? So when for example, choice one gets pressed, it'll look inside the script, find this function, and then it will do something. In this case, the idea I have for it to do is to simply go to a different scene containing the, I guess you could say the result of our action. Uh, for example, so if I said go to class, right? It would, of course, call up the class scene, which doesn't exist right now because I haven't made it. But if I did, if I did have it here, that's what it would do. Uh, and that's the same for the other two. I've just decided that the easiest way for a player to have choices and to interact with this uh, basic project of ours is to just change scenes. And inside that scene, it'll do something different, and so forth and so on. Uh, for example, inside of our schoolyard scene, we have different dialogue. So we could say, back in our school scene, if they say, go to courtyard, for example, it would look at our chat box, okay? And find choice number two, because this is choice one, this is choice two, this is choice three, and it would load up the scene corresponding to that choice. And that's all we would have to do to get it to uh, change to the schoolyard scene. And then while they were in the schoolyard scene, if they answered yep to whatever the next set of dialogue would be, then it would do something else. And I hope you guys kind of understand what I'm talking about. I hope that wasn't uh, confusing. I feel like I might have got you all a little bit lost there, but hopefully that caught you up. So that's all that's doing right now. Uh, when we connect it up, of course. So let's look at our script. Uh, we'll go ahead and set up choice number two because we know that choice two um, is set to go to the courtyard in our text. So back in our script, all we're going to have to do is find the variable choice two and then load up the scene like we did with our skip scene, okay? And we could just copy this little bit of code right here and then go back inside of our chat box and go down to choice two and we'll paste this in and instead of saying next scene we'll say uh, when button number two gets pressed we're going to go to uh, schoolyard to our schoolyard so this is rest I think it has to be in no I don't think it has to be in, in quotes We'll just, oh, oh, okay, right, my bad. I got a little bit lost myself. Uh, let's see, choice two, okay? So change scene, choice two, and that's all we have to do there. Now if we go back to our scene here and we find our chat box, we can see choice two is blank, so let's set this to be res, semicolon slash slash scenes slash levels because I've added a new folder 
and then we need to set it to be schoolyard.tscene dot t scene okay and if we save that and we run it we'll get our text showing up and then it will ask a question should I talk to my friends or go to class first well let's go to the courtyard and try to talk to our friends and voila we are now in the courtyard and we get our next uh, set of a uh, dialogue and that's it that's how all of that works super simple and we should be able to build our game off of it. So let's take a look at one last thing I've got, and that is our task list. So for every game, I like to now keep a list of tasks that have to be done in order to move on with the next step of the game. So for, for example, this project, since we have a majority done, we can save, we can load, we can skip, we can uh, make choices. We're going to need to now write a story, make some sound effects, make some characters, uh, animate those characters, make portraits, and clean up the UI and a couple of other things. So we got a lot of other tasks ahead of us, but that's all of the programming bits done for today. I hope this helped you guys out, and if it did, hit that like button and subscribe and share this around and thank you guys for staying with me my name is cold blue light and i will see you next time